Okay, so we have uh, two talks. The first is on the rotator cuff, and the second one will be on other pathology outside the cuff. I have to mention my disclosures, consultant for Bioclinica, book royalties from Elsevier, grant from AIUM, and research equipment from Harvest Technologies. So I'm going to talk about sonographic technique. I know that we just had a, the demonstration, but I want to re just reemphasize a couple points before we move on to talk about rotator cuff tears and some other miscellaneous pathology. So as you know, there are four structures that, that make up the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus in the front, subscapularis going to the lesser tuberosity, the infraspinatus and teres minor in the back. And one point I want to make is this subacromial subdeltoid bursa. It's a hyphenated structure because it is a, a composite of two bursa, and it's a very large bursa. You can see it forms a cap over the shoulder. It's not just in the acromion. It actually comes down over the greater tuberosity. It comes down over the biceps and subscapularis and over the infraspinatus. And in diseases where it's chronically inflamed, like rheumatoid arthritis, it can be even larger. So just realize that it's not simply under the acromion, but it's a large structure that can form a cap over the entire shoulder. We've talked about anisotropy already. Just to demonstrate again with the shoulder, that when you see something hypochoric, you need to make sure the sound beam is perpendicular. If it fills in, then you know it's artifact. So you're focusing on where it's perpendicular and re-angling where it's not. So if you're looking at a tendon and long axis, what maneuver do we use to deal with anisotropy? We use the heel-toe maneuver. So we're rocking along the long axis of both the transducer and the tendon. So briefly, just I'm going to re-demonstrate what I went over because I think uh, just to re-emphasize a few areas. So again, palm up, short axis. 